Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. Cheers. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. That's right. I believe in you. Uh, Never, ever has it been stronger than it is right now. The belief I have in every single one of you continues to be the motivation that gets me driving and wants me to do this show as often and every single day, right? That's the term we use. So welcome to episode 200. 53. Got a great show prepared for you tonight, but I want to open up with this one thing. Uh, as you know, uh, about it, when I started this journey, my journey started with me being in the military, obviously still am. I have a reti- retirement, debt say, uh, bleh, retirement date set. If you go to fatdag.com, you'll see a countdown clock that'll tell you exactly when my retirement ceremony is. I'll give you a special little hint. If you click on the clock, if you click on the clock on fatdag.com, uh, you are officially invited to the retirement ceremony. So RSVP through that link. Let me know if you want to make it here. I would love to have you here, as many of you who want to make the trek. The next morning, we celebrate in the ultimate style. So that's kind of a, a fun weekend for all of us. So anyway, so fatdag.com has the link out there. But as I was working through this whole process, getting everything squared away, um, Operation Fat Dag, me being in the military, I said, you know, I want to help military people. And what I figured out was the best way for me to help those in the military was actually to get out of the military. And so, you know, I I had no plans of of retiring this early from the military. My plans really included me doing a full 30-year career, staying at least till my daughter was was out of college so that I had had an income stable enough to continue to provide for her in that sense. But uh, when I I finally saved my career and I, I realized how valuable it was and how important it was for me to to want to help other people, I got some advice that it said, Mike, if you really, truly are serious about this, if you really want to help the members of the military get their, you know, get their fitness under control, get their weight under control, and you want to revamp the military, you actually, you actually have to get out. And it didn't make sense to me until now. And what's what's true about that is, is in order to infect change, I, I can't you know, it's hard to serve and then also at the same time say, here's what you're doing incorrectly. So as I step out, it gives me the freedom, gives me the time, and gives me the, 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 the fear of non-retribution to say, hey, here's what needs to get fixed. I believe I have a solution. I believe what the military is doing is fantastic. I believe we can take it one step further, and that's what I want to do. So, so I launched Operation Fat Dag as a nonprofit. I got a notice in the mail from the IRS uh, a couple days ago that says, congratulations, your application has been received and approved. Operation Fat Dag is officially a a charity, a nonprofit charity, labeled as an educational charity under uh, code 501c3 that will now exempt us from, from taxes. Now, just for clarification purposes, the podcast doesn't exist in that lane. So this is strictly for the Operation Fat Dag side of everything that I do. Uh, not necessarily the wise advice side, but the point of the matter is this. Operation Fat Dag is now a real, live, living, breathing thing that that truly aims to help those in the military continue their honorable careers by taking care of their fitness. The, the long-term goal is for me to cover whatever costs associated with with either a, a WW membership or or whatever gym membership, whatever whatever educational tools you need. I want to make sure that I have the resources available to cover that for you. That's what that means. 
It's still growing. We're we're day, you know, we're four days into this thing officially from a 501c3 standpoint. Um, at some point, I will beg you for donations to that charity. Right now is not the time because I don't have that completely set up yet. But uh, but our plan will be that anyone in the military, no matter what your status is, if, if you're struggling with your fitness, I will cover whatever cost you are are needed for you to get healthy. I think that's pretty cool. So th- so as I was going through that in my head, I got a phone call today from someone I've worked with before, uh, someone who's who's in the military who struggled with their fitness. And uh, we've talked you know, back and forth a few times, and this person called me tonight and said, or actually texted me and said, hey, is it okay if we chat? So absolutely. So, so we talked on the phone. And I want to share just a little bit without, uh, you know, I certainly will not reveal any names, but I want to share a piece of you that actually um, kind of made me tear up a little bit. And he was telling me about, uh, you know, he's just like me, struggling with his fitness and, and didn't know where to turn. And, and he came home from work. Uh, the other day, and his his son looked at him and said, "Daddy, Daddy, I want to I want to be just like you when I grow up." And you know, and and for most of us as a parent, that's what we want to hear, right? We we want to hear that our kids are looking up to us and and they're inspired by us and they want to be just like us. But what actually happened is when when his son said that to him, he actually in his, in the back of his head he said, "Oh no, I, I don't want you to be like me." I don't want you to be overweight. I don't want you to be unhealthy and unfit and struggling with all these the issues that I have that all you know stem from being in this place where I just can't figure my life out. So that stark realization hit him. And now, and since then, he's gone on to make amazing progress. He told me about his update. I, like I said, I don't want to share out a privacy concern because I don't think he intended for this to be on the podcast. But, but he, he went on to tell me uh, the amazing work that he's done since hearing that from his son, that he wants his son to want to be like him. But what he wants is for him to be something that he wants his son to be like which is incredible. So, uh, so dude, you know who you are. Hats off to you. Big old love coming through the podcast to you. Uh, keep up the amazing work and, uh, and keep getting it done. You know I'm here for you every single step of the way. I believe in you. 100% believe in you. So uh, keep, up, keep up the amazing work. All right, so that's, uh, that's the opening. Uh, so let's get into the first email. This first email comes in out of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Marsha writes in, says, Hey, Mike. Uh, and Marsha is joining us on the live show as well. She says, hey, Mike, I knew this day would come. I just didn't know when. Yep. I made goal today. Whoop, whoop. Actually, point uh, two under. Because I wanted to. No, it didn't happen by accident. It took 369 days to lose 92.2 pounds. It took laser focus. It did not happen by accident. I never missed a meeting or a weigh-in for 53 weeks. If it wasn't going to help my progress, it wasn't in my kitchen. At parties and restaurants, I made the best choices from what was offered. Granted, I had no stressors to speak of in my life during this time. No, I did not have a chef, nor does anyone grocery shop for me. It was me. My hard work and determination, and of course, you and my wingmen. I could not thank this community enough for the love and support I receive daily from everyone. I would not have been successful so soon without each of you. So, Mike, from the bottom of my sarcastic Cleveland heart, I thank you. You rock with so much love in my heart, Marsha. Marsha, um, when this email came in, when I found this out, uh, I was I was ecstatic for you, and I and I'm I'm really proud of the way you crafted this email so so purposely. Uh, you and I have had a lot of conversations, and and when uh, I would guess venture to say that had you made goal many 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 months ago, uh, you would have made goal strictly on the scale number, not mentally. And I don't mean that with any disrespect, but what I mean is, is the words that you put in this email right here are so purposely deliberate, and this email, regardless of what you weigh, this email tells me that you're a goal. has nothing to do with your scale. has nothing to do with how much you weigh. It has everything to do with your mindset. And so, so many, many, many months ago, you may have made goal on the scale, but I believe now you've done the both. You, you've taken care of the scale issue. You've also taken care of the mindset issue, which is what is going to solidify this in for a very, very, very long time. 
A couple things you said I want to point out because I believe they're really, really, really specific is that um, that you, as you went through this process, it didn't didn't happen by accident. If it wasn't going to help my progress, it wasn't in my kitchen. And then you said, you know, it you did it. That's the word you use. Is it, it, it was for you? It was hard work and determination. It was all you that made it happen. I think before, and you and I had this conversation where you would say something like, Mike, you know, thanks to you, I did this. And I said, no, it has nothing to do with me. You know, sure, I'll help you. And so, so what you put here is that you could not have been successful so soon without each of us. That I agree with. I agree that the community helps you maintain the focus, which helps it get there quicker. But you know, and you clearly admit that everything that happened to you was because of you taking the effort to do it. Congratulations, 92.2 pounds. 92.2 pounds. That's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, I can't wait to to see you for the Indie Ultimate. I'm sure you're going to look fantastic. And I'm sure this year the Indie Ultimate is going to be way more fun uh, than last year, right? We're going we're gonna to rock this thing. We're truly going to enjoy it. And, and so here you are saying uh, never missing a meeting and never missing away in 53 weeks. And your reward now is that you get to live a lifetime of happy, healthy, fit life because you made the best choices. You know, and, and the cool thing is that you said that you made the best choices from what was offered. That's kind of key, right? You went somewhere and whatever was there, you made the best choice in the moment that you were, you did the best you could in the situation that you were in. That is what matters. It was you. It was completely you. It was your hard work. It was your determination. And it was the tools that you employed on top of those two things to include the Wingman community. Congratulations from your, uh, you know, from my sarcastic heart to your sarcastic heart. Um, you know, uh, you rock. You absolutely rock. I could not be more proud of you than I am at this moment. And I think, like I said, the biggest pride for me is, and then your mindset has completely transformed from the very couple first times that we started talking. Uh, I can see, like I said, goal in your words, and that is is more important. So congratulations, Marcia. Uh, folks, thank you for for celebrating with her. She is an incredible incredible inspiration, um, for sure. And so keep up the amazing work, uh, in that regard. So cool. Um, so anyway, and on that note, uh, also next email comes in and it is from Karen out of Sacramento. Karen says, uh, this evening I was able to join the live recording of episode 252. It was a great show as always. It got me thinking about my journey, my struggles, my successes, you know, the ups and downs that are simply part of life part of this journey? Tomorrow, February 5th, is my first ever WW anniversary. Yes, I have imperfectly followed this program for 365 days, 8,760 hours, 1,095 meals, and 52 weigh-ins. That was for you, Lee. And through the many ups and downs, I have found success. As of Super Bowl weekend, I'm down 56 pounds. When I joined a year ago, my naive self set a goal to be at my ideal weight in a year. Well, I'm not at goal. However, I am so happy and proud of what I've accomplished, and most importantly, what I've learned about me, my body, and my mind. I am so grateful to have found you in this community of wingmen that remind me to stay focused and that perseverance and self-love are the main ingredients to achieving goal. I owe you an email about my journey and my why. I'm not ready to dig into the raw emotions. I like living in my fragile cocoon. Until then, I will take advantage of the WW tools, the inspiration, and the motivation that you and the wingmen provide. Thank you all, Karen from Sacramento. Karen, uh, cool job. Happy anniversary. You know, it, it's very similar to what we talked about just a second ago with Marsha. So here you are one year later uh, having an anniversary of setting a life-changing course to, to be a better you. And so, so going through this imperfectly is exactly how you do it. Following the program every single day, waking up, doing it, that's what it takes. 52 weigh-ins, not skipping a meeting, not skipping a weigh-in. You know, certainly things happen, but, but getting your mind at a point where you understand that you are doing this, that's where the success comes in. So having uh, a successful year on the program 
congratulations on that. So many of us don't ever see that one year anniversary. And so that is, is something we absolutely need to celebrate. As a result of your hard work, focus, determination, effort, you're down 56 pounds. That does not happen by accident. That's you working it. That's you figuring it out. That, that's you saying, I want to do this and I'm going to figure it out. And, and imperfectly, I'm going to work this thing until I get the results that I need. I, you, you've, you've said something that I, I've said many times on this show is that when you joined a year ago, your naive self set a goal to be at your ideal weight in a year. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of setting dates. I'm not a fan of saying I want to lose X amount of pounds by this such and such a date. Because I think what happens is, 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 and you did just the opposite, which is truly congratulations to that. But for so many of us, we say, I want to lose 30 pounds by this wedding. I want to lose 50 pounds by in one year. And if you come up short on that number, we forget to celebrate what we've done instead. For instance, if you said, I want to lose, you know, I want to be you know, 100 pounds down by the time I, at one year at Weight Watchers, and you come up 56 pounds down. In some world, you would say, oh my God, I'm a failure. I want to be down 100 pounds. I'm only down 50. And you would neglect to, to mention that you were actually down 50 pounds. So I'm not a fan of setting dates for that reason. What I'm a fan of is setting a tennis goals. What I'm a fan of is you walking, waking up every single morning saying, I want to do this. What I'm a fan of is you reminding yourself that you can do this every single day. What I'm a fan of is you joining a community of supportive people that say, hey, um, Karen, you can do this. Let's do it. That's what I'm a fan of. So congratulations on that. All of those things put you in a place where you're down 56 pounds. I promise you, you feel better. I bet I know you feel better. And so that's where it's all about is, is, is learning to celebrate this. You, you have accomplished so much, and the fact that you are so happy and so proud of what you accomplished and what you've learned about you and your mind and your body, that is the piece that's going to carry you to goal. Those are the tools that you need long term. And so you can hit goal by stepping on a scale and having a scale say, congratulations, you weigh less than you did you know, a year ago. Yay, congratulations. But, but that doesn't mean squat if you haven't changed the mental attitude inside your brain. And the, for the fact that you now admit on paper that you're happy and proud of what you've accomplished, that's goal. And, and most importantly, you've learned a lot about you and your mind and your body. That's goal. You can continue to improve on that. You can, make, you can certainly make adjustments and you can get better, but, but that's what we're after. That mindset right there is so powerful. And, and knowing that, that you have this, the, you know, the perseverance and the self-love to really get yourself there, powerful stuff. Powerful, powerful, powerful stuff. I completely understand the raw emotions of, of your true why. And, and, you know, and if it helps you to share it, by all means, share it. But if it doesn't help you to share it, then that's up to you. But here's what I would encourage either way. I would encourage you to at least get it written down. I don't care if you send it to me or not. I would love to share it on the air. However, and I would even share it anonymously if you needed it, but, and that's fine too. But, but what I really, really, really want you to do is share it with you. I want you to get it out of your head and own it on paper so that you can kind of push it aside and say, I've let it out and I'm moving forward. That's, what I, that's why I always encourage you to write it down. You know, again, the show would not exist about without your email. So there is a component of it. Yeah, I want you to send it to me. But the reality is, is, is if you hit goal and this show no longer exists, I don't care. I'm not in it for anything other than you being successful. And whatever it takes for you to be successful is what I want. So I understand the raw emotion. I understand digging into it, but I encourage you to go ahead and spend some time getting it out of your head and, and owning it and, and dismissing it in such a way where, where you're moving forward. So continue to take care, uh, to take advantage of all the tools, the inspiration, the motivation that have come from the Wise Wingman Facebook group. We are here for you every single step of the way. Uh, Karen, congratulations. Uh, great, great, great job. Keep up the amazing, amazing work. This next email uh, comes in out of Wisconsin. Diane says, hi, it's Diane from Wisconsin. Uh, I'm 58 years old. I want to share my why. I've been overweight most of my adult life, but less than 25 pounds over. About 12 years ago, horrible events in my life started to accumulate. I began to slide out of life. Each event took a piece of my soul. Each event caused a glacier of ice that moved over my heart and my soul. I stopped living. I was dead. 
I had little joy in my heart. I played the happy person or a person who cared, which, which was so stressful. I withdrew from family and friends and life. Going anywhere was filled with anxiety, and, and the only thought of was going back home. Life and my family's life moved on without me. I was never going to let anyone hurt me again. I would not reach out for relationships. I had a very abusive childhood that I'd, I'd gotten lots of therapy for, so I felt therapy made no difference. My doctor asked if I had suicidal thoughts. Not really. I, I just don't want to live. I welcome death, but not by my hand. I could not do that to my family. But what I came to realize is that, that, that I was committing suicide. I was killing myself by eating anything and lots of it. I kept eating and eating, and, and I gained 150 pounds. I was dead. Being fat kept people away from me. I was less attractive. No one would desire me even my husband. Fast forward to now, things are going better. I had health issues this year that I didn't like at all, and because I was morbidly obese, I began to realize I was committing suicide by the slowest way possible, by eating. I hated myself. I decided to join WW five weeks ago, and I've lost 10 pounds so far. I feel different. I scour WW recipes and connect, and, and I go to meetings. I found you and I listen to, all, listen to you all the time, uh, and you're planting the seeds in my thoughts and my brain of health and happiness. I love your comment that you can, go out on, you can go on a diet, but if you don't deal with the why, you never win. I'm climbing back. The trail is still a little steep, but, but it will get steadier. I have gotten to the point that I can say I am proud of myself, uh, but still feel focused on the new me, that it will come. Uh, thank you for letting me admit this. I needed to know someone will listen, and I won't feel shame. I have a why now. I am slowly, slowly melting. Diane from Wisconsin. Diane, um, I, I want to take just a quick second before I dig deep into your email and just thank you for sharing that. Uh, writing that down, uh, truly not easy. I get it. Um, but I'm proud of you for, for taking the opportunity to get it out of your head and say, yeah, I, I, need, to, I need to release this and owning it. Uh, it's an amazing story. And, and you are um, clearly, you, you write this thing beautifully. You're able to articulate your thoughts so wonderfully. So what you have going for you is actually a lot. You're, you're, you're probably, not probably, you're an amazing person uh, that has a creative mind uh, that you have, are able to understand this, the glacier that's formed over your heart, and now you're, you've described it so well is that you're slowly melting. Congratulations. And so, so I need you to know, before I get too deep into your email, I need you to know that I'm incredibly proud of you. I'm incredibly proud of you taking control of your life. So, so here we go back to, you know, everything that led you to where you are right now. You know, I, we didn't go into the detail of your abusive childhood, but I want to, I want to tell you uh, that I'm, I'm sorry for that. I, I don't have any answers as to why this still exists in our society. And, and I, 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 it pains me uh, to even hear the fact that as a child, you had to live through that. I'm proud of you for getting through it. I'm, I'm proud of you now for, for understanding that, that going through the therapy made no difference, but you now can self-help and go, you know what, I, I can get through this. You know, I, I understand that the term that you use when you talk about someone asked you if you, if you were suicidal, and, and, and no, you could not do this by yourself. I, I understand that. But, but also the fact that you articulate that you welcome death, but just not by your hand. And so... Um, where that comes into the play is that's an emotion that I believe a lot of us have shared. And you found a way to write it where I bet you so many people will, will email into me and tell me that they understand that. So I, I wasn't exactly there, but I was probably close enough where if it happened, it happened. But I, I certainly wasn't going to do it. And, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't to the point where, where I had those thoughts. But at the same point is, is that's exactly what, we, what I was doing as well. So all of us, as we continue to eat, it is the slowest, slowest way we can, we can end our lives. 
you know, so many diseases are tied to obesity. And we, and we bring that on ourselves. And so you've now recognized that. You've recognized that so much that, that you've made a complete change and you've lost 10 pounds so far. I, I cannot tell you how important those 10 pounds are. Those pen, 10 pounds right now are at 100% of your weight loss journey. Those 10 pounds recognize, or sorry, um, represent, those 10 pounds represent a, you saying, I want something different for my life and doing it. That's what it represents. And so one of the coolest things about losing 10 pounds is that you did it deliberately. You wanted to make a change. You decided to make a change. You started to make a change. You used the tools available to you and you made the change. Don't for a single second discount that number. 10 pounds in, is an amazing accomplishment. Beyond, uh, it's nothing you can do on accident, like I said. It's all you saying, I can do this. And what it's done, it has proven to me and proven to yourself that you can do this. That's what you need to know. You can do this. I, I don't promise you it's going to get easier. I don't promise you, it, you know, it's going to be magical. I don't promise you it's going to happen next week. But what I promise you, and what I firmly believe is that you can do it. You've proven that. You've, you've proven it, and, and you've proven it to me, and, and I believe with everything I have that you can do this. So continue to stay connected to our community. Continue to stay you know, focused on the podcast. Continue to allow the seeds of, of positivity, positivity, health, and happiness take root in your brain and let those flowers bloom. Let them grow. What I, what I would ask you to do is, is find a way outside of the podcast to, to find a way every single morning to remind yourself just how awesome you are. Remind yourself just what you're thankful for, what you have going for yourself. And, and start every single morning off with that success. And because, because as you said that, you know, you're, you're, you're almost ready to be proud of yourself and you want to be focused on the new you that will come. The new you, the new you is a mixture of, of the old you and the new you combined. So, so we don't just flip a switch and turn into a new person. We're going to have whatever we had in life we will always have. But the, but the difference now is that, that your, your focus is looking at the, at the amazing things that you have instead of dwelling on, on what you know, could have been, should have been, and, and isn't exactly perfect in our life. I love the fact that you say you feel different. I, I know for a fact that, that when you get to the point where, where you start losing weight and you start taking control of your life, it's more important than the losing weight side of it. But when you start taking control and you start feeling in control and, and, and all of a sudden you do feel different, that different is what we're after. That, that different is, is you saying, okay, I can do this. So keep up the amazing work. Like I said, um, I know for, I'm very, very proud of you and I, and I believe in you more than you'll ever be able to understand. I know this is, this is your time. This is your time. You're going to get it done. Thank you for writing in and admitting it. Um, I, of course, I'll listen. And there is no shame in this. You know why there's no shame in this? Because every single person listening at some point during your email nodded their head and said, yep. 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 I get it. And so there is no shame in this. And so now you have your why. You have your why. Dig deep into it. Continue to use it. Use that why as your litmus test. Use that why every single day. Say, the action that I'm doing right now, does that align with my goal or not? What I'm doing right now, does that align with my why? Does my why allow me to do this? Yes or no? If it does, do it. If it doesn't, reevaluate. You just have to be right half the time. You don't have to get it right every single time. You just got to be close. You got to wake up wanting to do it and you can. So again, Diane, thank you so much for, uh, for, for writing in and sharing your story with us. Uh, the next email comes in at a, from Kathy. Kathy says, hi, hi Fat Dag. Uh, this is just me writing in what I feel when I feel it. Fat Dag, I need some tough love, I think. I feel like I should quit. 
I've been doing this for almost a year and a half, and well, I'm 14 pounds above where I started. I don't know how to keep going. I've been fighting for so long with so little success. It just makes me think, well, why keep fighting for something that's not working? The problem is that I know it works. I just can't get it to work for me. I know I want this, but I want it to be easy, and I don't know that I want it enough to keep fighting. I know that if I stop, I'll only gain more and more and more. I promised myself I'd never quit. I don't feel worth the effort that losing this weight is going to take. I'm weighing in tonight, and I have a feeling it's going to be up. If it does, I'll start crying without a doubt, as I am now. Lord Almighty, if it goes down, I'd be shocked, but I don't think it will fix my mindset right now. My leader says that this will only work when you're ready for it to work. Well, I was ready a year and a half ago, but I'm not so sure I am anymore. My tears right now tell me that I want this, and even writing the words, I want to quit, break my heart. I cannot quit on myself. I have reasons for doing this. This is me to, uh, for me to feel better about myself and to look at myself and to have my outside match my inside. Why don't I want to fight for that? I don't know. I'm tired, and I need someone to understand that. Kathy. Uh, Kathy, uh, here we go. Um, your opening sentence is, um, I want to focus there first. Uh, I need some, you said, I need some tough love, I think. I can tell you right now, one thing I don't offer is tough love. Um, I don't resonate with it. It does not work on me. I, I don't want to give it out. Um, I only have real, genuine love. Me telling you all the quote-unquote tough love scenarios, I think you beat yourself up enough already to know them all. What I want to do is I want to give you some real, like I said, real, genuine, I believe in you kind of love. I, I want to make sure that you know that what you're going through is, is actually normal. I, I want to normalize this for you. There, there are times when, you know, this is not my first rodeo with this, right? The, the, I, I, I've lived the same scenario that you've lived is that, you know, I, I've woken up in the morning on fire saying, I want to do this. And, and I, I've looked at my, my wife and said, please help me. And I said something along the lines month, you know, years ago, like, hey, listen, I, you know, I'm, I'm ready to, I'm, I'm committed to this. And then I said, I, I need your help. If, if you see me doing something that, you know, that doesn't helpful, remind me. And then I would dig into a bag of chips and she would look at me and I'd say, hey, stop, not right now. I'm eating these chips. Well, Mike, I, you asked me to remind you, right? And it's a stop. You know? so, so I have deliberately done just the complete opposite of what I needed to do. So, so I understand that. And, and, and what you have identified what you have come to realize that is the most important aspect of this entire journey is that you cannot quit on yourself. There's nothing to quit. So what we're in now is we're in the process of completely changing your life. So again, I don't have the tools for tough love. I'm not going to give that to you. I'm not going to dish it. I don't think you deserve it. I don't think you need it. I don't believe it is helpful. I believe for so many of us, we, we are so tough on ourselves that, that someone else providing a little bit of tough love actually, in, in some cases, make it worse. So, Kathy, what I want to tell you is that you have reasons for doing this. Every single person who, who starts and embarks on a journey to lose weight, to get healthy, whatever, whatever term you want to use, I think in a lot of our cases that, that we join to lose weight, and then as we lose weight, we decide we want to get better. But what, one of the things that we know is that we have a reason for doing this. It may be very often that, that you can't articulate it. You may not fully understand it, but you actually do have it. You had it enough where you said, I want to join. You have it enough where you say, uh, a year and a half later, I am still going to meetings to try and get it done. That means you, un you have a why. You clearly have one. Now, whether or not, like I said, whether or not you understand it fully, whether or not you can articulate it, whether or not you can articulate it enough in your own brain for you to fully understand it and allow you to, yourself to use that to power you, different conversation. So I would encourage you to go back to the episode that talks about exploring your why. 
I forget the exact episode number off the top of my head, but if you're in the if you're in the uh, the Wise Advice app, at the very top there's a search bar. Type search, uh, you know, why or in questions or something like that, and and it'll develop the episode that has uh, the five questions. I'm gonna guess and say it's 184, but I'm not positive on that. I want you to listen to that episode. And what I want you to do is I want you to run through the five questions uh, by yourself, completely, completely, completely alone. And the one I really want you to focus on more than the rest of them is I want you to focus on what's the hardest thing you've ever had to do in your life. And what I want you to do is I want you to outline it and I want you to understand and outline why it was so painful, how painful it was. I, I really, you know, the tears that are still flowing, I want them to continue to flow. Because what I want you to understand is that you have probably been through some amazing things, amazingly difficult things in your life. And here we are trying to add to that. And what I need you to understand is that, that you made it through those events, which proves to me, it proves to the world that you are strong. You are successful. Anything that you are willing to do, you've found a way to do it. We have this little thing now that, that called wellness or called health or called weight loss that seems to be giving us a little bit of a run for our money. But, but you have tools to do it. You have the internal strength to know that you can do it. And you have the most important thing ever. The most important thing ever is you have a firm, fixed belief that you cannot quit on yourself. That is where the success comes from. So now what we have to do, we have to dig a little deeper into, into the aspect of, okay, now what, what tools am I using incorrectly or what tools can I use differently to help me get to where I want to be? I, I fully understand the frustration of being at this for a year and a half and, and being up 14 pounds. I, I understand that. But what I, what I want you to know is that, that you believe the program works. I believe the program works. And, and all of us understand that, yeah, it, sure, your leader says, you know, it, it, you know, it works when you're ready for it. Well, the reality is, is the program will always work. It's like your car. Your car will always start when you go to it, or you know, nine times out of ten, right? Your car will start, but you have to walk out. You have to have your keys in your hand. You have to put the key in the ignition. You have to turn it or press the button, whatever car you have. You have to actually deliberately make it work. That's the piece I want you to focus on. I want you to use that why that you've written down. I want you to, I want you to detail it out as often, as detailed as you can. I want you to once a week, no matter what, read it. I want you to use that tool to power you, to motivate you, to make the best choice you can in the moment that you're in. I want you to track. I want, I want you to be accountable to things. I don't, I don't care if you're over. What I need you to do is, is, is build the accountability. And, and I, I'm guessing a lot here because this is a one-way communication. But, but my guess is a year and a half into it, as we're struggling through here, there, you're, there are days that are better than others. And what I'm trying to do is make sure the days that are better than others outnumbers the days that aren't better than others. You know, that's what it, it doesn't, it, it's, it's very easy on this journey to be successful for one, two, three days and not for the rest of the week and feel like we're making progress when in fact we're actually are going backwards. You know, to, to, to do this successfully, it takes consistency. It takes you more often than not doing the things that are aligned with your goal and aligned with your why. Using that why to, to ha allow you to make the right proper decisions as you move forward is where I need you to focus. So get it written down, read it every single week, have it so ingrained that within a couple months time, you should be able to recite this thing from memory. Then every time you sit down for a meal or every time you decide to, to go for some exercise or not, or do some extra activity, I want you to ask yourself, does that activity align with my why? If it does, continue to do it. If it doesn't, evaluate, adjust. I need you to know more than anything, you are absolutely worth the effort. That's the most important thing I want to leave you with. You are 100% worth every ounce of effort you put into this. It's not, it's, it's, it's not a big deal at this point that, that we're just working in the wrong direction because we're just going to give you the educational tools to take the next step in this journey. You've done the hard work. 
The hard work is done. The hard work is you saying, I can't quit. The hard work is for you going every single week for a year and a half. That is not easy. That's the piece most people give up on. Most people give up on the attendant side of this long before they give up on, on can I do it or not. You've proven as a fighter, as a, as a strong person, that, that you can persevere through that. And what you've done and what you've accomplished there proves to me that you're worth it, proves to me that you can do this, and, and it doesn't require you, you hoping and praying when you get to the scale that the numbers are up and down. It requires you saying, I'm going to go out, I'm going to start the car, I'm going to make it work. I'm using my why to power me through. Kathy, I can't wait to your next email. Uh, I firmly believe that, that your next email to me uh, will be something along the lines of, OMG, I got this. OMG, oh my God, I have figured this thing out. Dag it, I'm down five pounds. I'm down 10 pounds. That's what your next email to me is going to be like. And when it does, I cannot wait to get it on the air and share it with you and, and celebrate with you. So, uh, so that is awesome. Congratulations on getting that email drafted because I can't wait to read it. Let's celebrate together. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on uh, the Wise Advice podcast link. Send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in at onair at fatdag.com. I want you to be absolutely proud of what you're doing. I actually also want you to share with me any questions, comments, concerns you have. Let's work through them. Let's work through them together as a community. Let's absolutely reach out to one another. Let's share what we have going on because I promise you, you are not alone. If you thought it, hey, I love you. You know you know I do, right? I love you guys. I love this community more than anything there is out there. But, but if you had that thought, I promise you, you're not that unique. You're not that special. Not in a bad way. But what I mean is, if you've had the thought, someone else has had it. And if you've had it and someone else has had it and you're willing to share it and they're not, maybe you can help countless other people find the freedom to finally, for the last time ever, say, I am going to do this. That's why sharing is so powerful. Keep up the amazing work. And, and of course, you are unique. You are special. You can do whatever you want to do. I believe in you. I absolutely believe you can do this. And I can't wait to see it in my inbox when you do. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.